I don't think it's crazy at all to say that the Formula One calendar has been a massive topic of discussion. Um, you know, looking back at last year, there were so many new Grand Prix like Portimao that we had that came out of nowhere. Some returning favorites like Imola, which I absolutely love, even if the racing isn't always the best. I'm just a big fan of Imola. And of course, this year, we've already had our very first race at Bahrain, but we are going into a 23 race season, a record for Formula One with some returning races like Zanvor and some brand new ones as well like in Saudi Arabia so yeah the calendar has definitely had its fair share of controversy and it's been like I said a big topic of discussion so in this video I'm going to be giving my five tracks that I would love to see make a return to the F1 calendar in 2022 or at least in the very near future now I will clarify this list is not going to be ranked or anything it's just five tracks and of course guys let me know your five tracks that you would love to see on the F1 calendar and to be honest, it can be either tracks that we've been to in the past that you'd love to see return or even tracks that we've never even been to before. So yeah, I'm sure you guys can come up with some maybe niche tracks that even I've never heard of. So yeah, I can't wait to see what you guys say in the comments box below. But yes, let's jump into this one. And I'm actually going to begin very quickly with an honorable mention. Now, the track that I'm going to give an honorable mention to is Mugello. Now, I absolutely love this track. I love the scenery. I love the layout. I love the fact that it's got gravel traps and the fact that it is so forgiving. It's a very old school track. And I've loved that track ever since I was a kid and I played it in like video games on like Forza or something. And it was just so great to see it in Formula One for the very first time. And what a race we got. The only reason that it's not included in my five tracks is because we already have two races in Italy and the calendar is already packed as it is but I absolutely love that track and if maybe Imola falls off the calendar then I think Mugello should absolutely replace it so yes that is my one honorable mention now, the first track that I've got on the list is Kyle Army in South Africa. Now, obviously, shout out to Josh Ravel. He did a really great video, of course, with Sim Dane. Amazing collaboration. I'm sure you guys have seen it. And there is just so much hype and excitement to bring back a Grand Prix in Africa because the last time we raced there was in 1993, which was won by Alain Prost, of course, in his final season in Formula One. And the track, to be fair, if you look at images of it from the last couple of years, it is still in good use. It looks good. It's not, you know, been left and abandoned to kind of, you know, decay away. It's still a track that's used for endurance racing. And as I said, there has been a lot of hype for a Grand Prix to return in Africa because I think Formula One, in terms of being an international sport, we do want to see races on as many continents as possible. Now, Africa is one of the more tricky ones because it's all to do with funding and there isn't as much funding in Africa for a Formula One Grand Prix. And that is why, if you notice, over the past two decades especially, uh, there's been a big push by Formula One to go into the Middle East where there is clearly a lot of money and a lot of funding for Formula One and that is why we've had the likes of Bahrain, uh, Abu Dhabi and now Saudi Arabia as well but I think for a race in Africa I think Formula One needs to be proactive in helping that nation and helping that continent in general to try and get a race to really kind of make Formula One a totally global and international sport. We want to see races all around the world and I think a lot of people including myself want to see a Grand Prix return to Africa. So yeah in terms of Kyle Army I would love for us to go back there obviously I wasn't around uh, back then I wasn't really born uh, to see the racing back in the 80s and early 90s but I would just think that it would be a really exciting opportunity to get a new generation of Africans into Formula One and I think in general it would just be really exciting to have a race in Africa. Now, next up, guys, and I've got to be honest, I've kind of cheated you just a little bit because this next choice is kind of two tracks in one. And by that, I mean, primarily, I'm going to be talking about Hockenheim, but I also wanted to say stroke the Nürburgring. Now, although we did return to the Nürburgring in 2020, sadly, once again, the German Grand Prix has fallen off the calendar, which I think is a big shame. Uh, but again, Hockenheim is my big choice for this, but I wanted to give a little shout out to the Nürburgring as well. But if you remember back in the late 2000s and early 2010s, the German Grand Prix was actually alternated from year to year between Hockenheim, then the Nürburgring, then back to Hockenheim, and then back to the Nürburgring. Now, I actually really like that idea because it kind of uh, kept the calendar fresh in terms of the German Grand Prix. We'd be going to a different track every single year. And even when we had great races, you know, there was almost a little bit of anticipation in terms of, oh my God, I can't wait to get back to the Hockenheim ring uh, in two years time. It's going to be amazing again. So 
So yeah, Hockenheim is my main choice because I think that track is absolutely amazing. It's really good for overtaking as well. Sergio Perez actually said that a few years ago. Now there has been so many great races and iconic moments at Hockenheim. It is such a good track. Of course, back in 2010, we had that famous Fernando is faster than you uh, team orders with Felipe Massa. 2012 was actually a really solid race. And I remember Sebastian Vettel getting into a few uh, really good battles with the McLarens. And uh, even 2014, Lewis Hamilton, after he had a brake failure in qualifying, he had to make a comeback drive through the field. And it definitely got very spicy with, I think it was either Kimi Raikkonen or Jensen Button. So that was a really great kind of comeback drive as well. And then of course, the last two times we've been there, I mean, 2018 and 2019, absolute bangers, absolute classics, so many amazing moments from both of those two races. So yeah, the German Grand Prix and Hockenheim in particular, I absolutely would love to see it back on the calendar. And I think now with two German drivers on the grid in Sebastian Vettel, a four-time world champion, and Mick Schumacher, the son of Michael Schumacher, I think it just makes the case even stronger to return the German Grand Prix to the F1 calendar and have it long lasting as well so that it doesn't fall off the grid. And the track we should come back to absolutely that keeps on delivering every single time is Hockenheim because it is an absolute banger. Now, next up, I have got Magni Corps in France. Now, we last raced there back in 2008, and I think the reason why I would love to see Magni Corps back on the calendar is that, you know, first and foremost, I do think that it is very important that Formula One maintains the French Grand Prix in general, because with Esteban Ocon and Pierre Gasly, there is so much exciting uh, French talent in Formula One. And to be honest, even in the lower categories with the likes of Théo Porcher, I think France are entering a real golden generation for drivers, so it is more important than ever before to have a French Grand Prix. And of course, you know, kind of the elephant in the room, you know, we have been at Paul Ricard for the past few years since 2018, and it just hasn't delivered. I think it's one of those tracks that it works for other series, but Formula One, it just doesn't work for Formula One. It has delivered quite boring racing. And as I said, you know, with two French drivers with so much French talent in the uh, lower ranks and a French Formula One team in Alpine, we need to keep the buzz and excitement around Formula One in France. France. And I fear that if, again, Paul Ricard doesn't deliver in 2021, if it's another boring race that we basically can't remember, I think we should move to Magni Corps because it is a great track. There has been some great races in the past as well. And I think that with the new generation of cars coming in 2022 and trying to maintain this buzz and excitement for Formula One in France, I think Magni Corps is the perfect place to go back to. Now, next up, I have got the Sepang International Circuit in Malaysia. Now, oh my God, I was so disappointed to see this track being kind of dropped uh, off the calendar at the end of 2017. It is one of my absolute favorite circuits. And I think in terms of the racing, I mean, you can just check that box so easily. It's definitely got that. There has been so many iconic races and moments and the Malaysian weather always throws up something spicy. Uh, in terms of the iconic races and moments that I can remember, Kimi Raikkonen taking his first ever win in 2003 and then in 2009 one of the wettest races in Formula 1 history that actually got cancelled and then half points were awarded and that incredible race in 2012 and that incredible showdown with Sergio Perez chasing down Fernando Alonso for the race win in a Sauber and also Fernando winning in that horrible Ferrari I mean I've talked about that on my channel very recently and even some of the some of the battles and moments the likes of Max Verstappen versus Lewis Hamilton in 2017, the likes of Max Verstappen and Daniel Ricciardo fighting for the race win in 2016, and then some of the amazing moments as well, and some of the classic moments in Formula One, the Kimi Raikkonen and his famous ice cream, Rob Smedley and that great uh, radio message to Felipe Massa, the uh, Felipe baby, stay cool. I mean, it was just such a funny radio message, even to really strange stuff like uh, Sebastian Vettel crashing into the back of Pascal Verline at the end of 2017. I mean, Malaysia has just delivered over and over again and please Formula 1, I want to return back to Sepang because that track delivers every single time. Now, last up, I have got Istanbul Park in Turkey. Now, Turkey is one of my absolute favorite tracks of all time. For me, number one is Canada, number two is Istanbul, and number three is Spa, so it is absolutely one of my all-time greats. When it was announced that it would make a comeback in 2020 for just that one season, I was absolutely ecstatic, and also I was just hoping and praying that it would give us a great race like it always does, and it did, and then some with Lewis Hamilton 
claiming his seventh world title. And not just that, to be honest, you know, away from Lewis winning his seventh world title. I mean, what a race we had. It was drivers making mistakes and spinning everywhere. Some amazing moves, some amazing uh, racing as well. Right down even to the final corner with Charles Leclerc, Sebastian Vettel and Sergio Perez. So it's just a great track with multiple overtaking opportunities. Turn one into the final corner, the back straight as well. That amazing left-hander that Turkey is famous for as well. I mean, it is such a great track. And although it doesn't have the history and the allure, and even if we don't have a Turkish Grand Prix driver that could really sell tickets and really hype up the buzz in Turkey, but in terms of the track itself, it's just a great track for racing, both in Formula One and even in the lower categories. I mean, Lewis Hamilton in GP2 had that famous race in 2006. So you can definitely overtake around that track. And it's one of those that, you know, you can put it like in Milton Keynes or something, and it would still give us great racing. It's just a great layout. And that is why I think it just absolutely deserves a place on the calendar, because even if it doesn't have the history of Monza, even if it doesn't have the scenery of Monaco, it's a great Grand Prix track, one of the all-time greats in my opinion. It does deliver every single time. And once again, I was really sad to see it kind of drop off again. And when you look at other tracks like Sochi, for example, which aren't delivering and just aren't good tracks for racing, I do think that Turkey, I mean, there are so many tracks that I think Turkey deserve to be in the calendar over. So yeah, when it comes to Istanbul, I think it is just one of the all-time great tracks in terms of the racing. It is so pure for the drivers, easy to follow, great straights, great to overtake on, and some amazing corners as well. Even though, as I said, this list is not technically ranked, I mean, Turkey would absolutely be my number one regardless because I think it's just such a great Grand Prix track that gives us great racing, which in the end is what we want. It's a great track and hopefully it can make a comeback to the Formula One calendar in the very near future. Please, Formula One, make it happen. Anyway, guys, there you go. That is my five, maybe even six, maybe even seven tracks that I would love to see that I have talked about in this video back on the F1 calendar in 2022, or at least in the very near future. Now, as I said right at the beginning, let me know your five in the comments box below. I can't wait to see what you guys think. And I hope you did enjoy this video. And if you did, then don't forget to drop a like and smash that subscribe button. And guys, I will see you in the next one. Bye, guys.